for the Raspberry Pi 3B. So let me show you how to hook it up. It's super easy. Just flip it over. Insert your Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. Align the pins like this. Right. Give a little bit pressure. And then there's a HDMI connector. Just put it in. Place hard so we can connect successfully. Okay, we're almost there. We just need to insert a Raspberry Pi or uh, a Ritual Pi or a record box. into this okay The first step is to download a copy of the latest 2018 Christmas beta uh, because the GPIO button controller we are trying to use will not work with the previous version. So we have to download this one. So let's go in here and click this one. It's a very special link. Then you come to something like this. It's a Christmas beta. And you go here to find your Raspberry Pi, whether it's Pi Zero or Pi Three. We're using Pi Zero, so let's click the Pi Zero link here. This one. Okay. Once you click that, you can download. To print the TF card, we need to use the extra software. Okay, you can download from here. Depending on the Windows or Mac you are using, you can download the right version. I'm using the Mac, so uh, I will be downloading the Mac version. Once the etcher is downloaded, uh, you can launch it. Then we can select the image. I downloaded it to here. Then I select the drive. Uh, this is the 16 gig that I used. And then we can start flashing. And it will ask you for a password for your administrative access. So you can let it finish. Usually take a quite a few minutes, five minutes at least. Okay, now that we've got this record box software loaded, we are going to insert it at the back of this game console. So I find that it's easier to just put your middle finger inside and then push it in that way. Be easier. Make sure you plug it in firmly. And then for the first time to pull up, we have to uh, insert the LAN cable into this slot here. Okay, it's inserted. And then for the first time, you're not sure if your battery is fully charged, so you better hook up a USB power cable. Just plug it into this. Let's plug here. And this is the power on off button. So let's power it on. 
then you'll notice there's a green LED for the Raspberry Pi. When it puts up, uh, the green LED will be blinking. If it doesn't blink, that means either you're running out of battery or the connection is wrong. Let's do some loud music. Let's see how it finished. Okay, it's booting up, loading. For the first time, it will take a bit longer. Okay, and this is the main menu. At this point in time, the buttons, nothing are working because we haven't configured the GPIO pins. So the next step, we will need to uh, connect to the network uh, and the remote connect to this console to configure the boot up files and parameters to make the GPIO works. Remote connect, we need to go to the terminal application in Mac or in the Windows, it could be the command prompts. Check where the the record box is connected, so we can do this command. If there's only one record box in your home network, this command will find it. So as you can see, it's uh, 1.2. And then next we can connect to it by ssh command ssh root at recordbox.local. Root is the ID we are trying to log in. Then we can put in the default password for record box, which is record box root in lower case, R E C A L B O X R O O T. There's only one L there. Okay, then we'll need to start modifying the record box.config file, which is this file. Uh, this is the VI editor. Uh, you press the forward slash to find something and then enter to stay there and then once you find it like this enter you stay there and then you want to change anything press A to turn it into insert mode see the bottom of the screen has the insert light up now you can change the thing so the thing we want to change is the custom pin mapping of the wave share game heads and we'll copy this command from my notes. So once you finish your edit, press escape, turn it into read-only mode, and then you can continue to edit uh, this enabled. You have to turn it to one. So enabled one, and then the argument is map equals four with your custom pin setting for your wave share game head. Next, we want to set up the Kodi. Let's search for Kodi. We want to enable it so we can watch some video on our game console. And then uh, we don't want it to start up in Kodi because we want to play games and only start the Kodi when we play some keys. Right? So when we press the X button, it will start Kodi. So let's enable that. Uh, make it 1. So Kodi X button equal 1. That means when you press the X button, it will start Kodi. Okay, the third thing we need to change is your Wi-Fi setting at home. So now we are connecting using the LAN cable. We want to make it more portable, so let's start the Wi-Fi and enable it. So search for Wi-Fi, enter. So Wi-Fi enabled, change to 1 if it's not already 1. And then for the region, you have to change it to your country code. For Hong Kong, I mean it's HK. For the SSID, change it to your home Wi-Fi SSID. Mine is Billy Wi-Fi. For the Wi-Fi key, change it to your home Wi-Fi's key. So I just tell you something. Okay, that's all you need to do. And then you can press colon X exclamation mark to save the file. Um, there's a bug in the way record box handle the GPIO configuration. So we need to fix the bug by typing in some other commands. So to do that, we need to remount 
the root file system as read write by this command. And then we need to uh, edit the boot up shell script. Okay, now within it, you have to search for a few things. First, search for extra2. Okay, we find it. This is extra2. And then we press A to add a line. And then put in extra3 equals dollar five. So we can store one more parameter from the GPIO custom pin setting. Then press escape when you finish. Then search for the next parameter, which is map echo. Okay, that's it. We have the default map equal one to two. So that means if you don't type in the map command, it will default to this one. But if you type in the map command, it's still not uh, getting the second set of parameters because you see here, the map only take in one parameter. We can't put in our customized GPIO pin. So what we need to do is press the A to add dollar extra free. Okay, once we did that, we will have the map parameter map equal four that falls into extra two, and then the GPIO echo or the custom pin number that falls into extra three. So once we do that, uh, we can successfully configure the wave share head, the game buttons. So let's save it. Okay, now we can shut down by this command and reboot. Okay, it's reporting now. Okay, starting. Okay, let's see where the button works. Ah, you see, the up and down works. What about the start button? Ah, okay, it works. You can uh, show the uh, the menu. Too bright. Okay, and then you can see it's moving. And then what about the A and B button? Let's see. A button is working. Great. B button going back. Going back. Now let's try to test if the Wi-Fi is working by unplugging the LAN cable. So unplugged, no more LAN cable. And then we'll uh, use the start button to bring up the menu. And then we move down to uh, the network setting. Press the A button, go in. So we can see that it's still connected. Still connected. And there's a new IP address for the Wi-Fi.133. Okay, we can close it. Go back. And let's try to run the Kodi. Press X to bring up the Kodi menu. Kodi menu. 
and then uh, launch code is press A. Okay, so this is the Kodi menu. By default, we have uh, one add-on. So let's start the add-on. The add-on is called YouTube. So we can test with YouTube, see whether our Kodi video system is working. Okay, let's play the uh, popular right now. Go up this one. Clemson to me saved college football last night. And I'm not engaging in hyperbole by saying that. Because all we've been talking about is Alabama. We remember the 35 point South Carolina drop from Clemson. We remember right. how Syracuse gave skip. them a run for their money. Clemson gave them a run for Go back. And you can uh, stop it by pressing the A. Uh, pressing the start, actually. You can stop it. Start to play again. Select, allow you to quit. Press A to quit and go back to the gaming system. So this is why I like Record Box. Everything is so nice, easily configured, and it has the built-in video player. So good luck with your retro gaming.